Hi, my name is Sienna Weens, Process Safety Engineer at Resource Compliance. In this short video, we will take a deep dive into an important component of an ammonia refrigeration system, condensers. In this video, we'll explore a variety of topics related to condensers. First, we'll discuss the function of a condenser within a system. Then, I'll show examples of various condenser types. In items three through seven in this list, we'll consider how to properly document condenser specifications within the process safety information section of a PSM program. Finally, we'll conclude by reviewing recognized and generally accepted good engineering practices for condensers. Namely, we'll highlight any unique requirements in IIAR standards two, four, and six. The purpose of the condenser is to reject the heat absorbed in the evaporators and compressor to the atmosphere. The evaporative condenser receives high pressure superheated vapor from the compressor and supplies high pressure liquid to the high pressure receiver. The condenser uses air and water to cool the warm ammonia as it passes through a series of tubes within the condenser. Water is contained in the sump of the condenser, which is then pumped and sprayed over the ammonia coil. As the cooling medium of air and water draws the heat from the vapor, the refrigerant condenses into a liquid and flows to the high pressure receiver. Under normal conditions, the evaporative condenser contains high pressure liquid and vapor ammonia. There are several types of condensers used in ammonia refrigeration systems. These include evaporative, water-cooled, and air-cooled. The evaporative condenser type is shown here. This type of condenser uses evaporative cooling to absorb heat from the ammonia inside the condenser. Evaporative cooling means that air and water are used in conjunction to achieve the lowest possible condenser temperatures. The interaction of the water and air causes a small portion of the water to evaporate, which cools the remaining water. The cooled water is what flows over the coil that contains ammonia inside the unit. The two configurations of evaporative condensers are forced draft and induced draft. The forced draft style of condenser involves fans which push the outside air through the condenser where it flows across the tube bundle and through the mist eliminators at the top of the unit. The fans for induced draft styles of condensers are typically located at the top of the unit. The fans pull outside air through the bottom of the condenser where it flows across the tube bundle. The air exits the condenser through the fan at the top. A water-cooled condenser does not rely on air for cooling, but only relies on water. These condensers come in the form of either a shell and tube or plate and frame type heat exchanger. Here is an example of a plate and frame heat exchanger, which serves as a water-cooled condenser. An additional aspect of water-cooled condensers is the associated cooling tower. Once the water in the condenser absorbs heat from the ammonia, the warm water will need to be cooled down before it is reused. This is accomplished through a cooling tower as shown here. Air cooling condensers do not contain any water and rely solely on air for condensing ammonia. These condensers can be mounted either horizontally or vertically. Here are additional examples of air cooled condensers. Four of the most relevant operating limits for condensers are pressure, temperature, water level, and water chemistry. The operating pressure of a condenser can be determined at the gauge board where the house discharge pressure is displayed. Most condensers are not equipped with pressure gauges at the unit itself. The pressure of the ammonia is constant throughout the condenser. This can be observed on a pH diagram where the refrigeration cycle is displayed. On the right, we see the compressor increases the pressure of the ammonia vapor while simultaneously superheating the vapor. When the ammonia enters the condenser, it goes through the process of desuperheating before it is condensed into a liquid. Desuperheating is the process of absorbing heat from the ammonia vapor until it reaches the point of saturation. Once the vapor reaches its saturation point, it can then condense into a liquid. While determining the operating temperature of the condenser is not necessary for operating the system, it is helpful to understand the value of evaporative cooling. Since evaporative condensers use both air and water, this enables the temperature inside the condenser to be lower than the outside air. This diagram illustrates that when the dry bulb temperature 
meaning dry outside air, is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the wet bulb temperature is about 68 degrees Fahrenheit. In this instance, the wet bulb temperature is the temperature of the air flowing across the wet coils containing ammonia. The bottom of a condenser is typically filled with water, which is pumped to the top of the condenser where it is sprayed over the tube bundle. If the water level drops too low in the condenser, it will not have enough to operate properly and condense the ammonia. Each condenser sump is equipped with a float that controls the water level. If this float gets stuck, it would cause the sump to dry out or overfill. In colder climates, condensers can be equipped with a remote sump. Remote sumps are located indoors to prevent freezing of water. Passivation is the process of carefully controlling the pH of the condenser water when it is first placed into operation. During passivation, a chemical process takes place which enhances the original corrosion-resistant galvanized surface of the tube bundles by forming an oxide coating. If passivation is not performed, a condenser's lifetime can be significantly shortened. Once passivation is complete, chemical water treatment continues to be implemented in a condenser. Several conditions are undesirable, like scale buildup, corrosion, and the development of bacteria or algae. Chemicals like alkaline phosphates, scale inhibitors, and oxidizing biocides are added to the water to manage the condition inside the condenser. When documenting the materials of construction for a condenser, a key document is the condenser submittal containing relevant manufacturer specifications of the condenser. The manufacturer's certified drawing is another key document to have on file for materials of construction. Here we see an example of an evaporative condenser depicted in a PNID. As it relates to condensers, there are a number of safety systems and other appurtenances to be aware of. All condensers must be equipped with a legible nameplate provided by the manufacturer. Condenser nameplates typically include the manufacturer, model number, and serial number. Additionally, each condenser water pump has two nameplates, one affixed to the pump and one to the motor. Mist eliminators are installed on evaporative condensers for the purpose of limiting the amount of water that splashes out of the condenser. Mist eliminators are installed on the top of forced draft evaporative condensers and on the side of the unit for induced draft condensers. Mist eliminators should be regularly cleaned to prevent excessive scale or algae buildup. These will also need to be replaced if they begin deteriorating from sun exposure. Evaporative and air-cooled condensers are equipped with at least one fan. These fans are either direct drive or belt driven as shown in this picture. Condenser water pumps are responsible for pumping water over the ammonia coil. The pumps draw water from the sump and pump the water through the spray nozzles located above the ammonia coil. Over time, non-condensables like air start to build up in an ammonia system. The best location for purging non-condensables is where the liquid ammonia drains from the condensers. If a system is equipped with an auto-purger like the one shown on the right, it purges air automatically from a connection on the condenser drain pipe. If an auto-purger is not installed, a purge valve is installed on the condenser which can be used to purge manually. We'll now turn our attention to the design codes and standards that must be adhered to during the design, installation, and operation of a condenser. Namely, we will consider unique requirements for condensers in IIAR's design standards, Standard 2. Then we'll examine the installation requirements in Standard 4. Finally, we address the inspection, testing, and maintenance requirements in IIAR Standard 6. Let's start with IIAR Standard 2, which addresses general aspects of condensers. We'll also examine requirements for air-cooled condensers, air-cooled desuperheaters, and evaporative condensers in Chapter 10 of IIAR 2. General requirements for various types of condensers are contained in Table 10.1. These requirements include the categories design pressure, ultimate strength, pressure and leak testing, secondary coolant side design pressure, 
protection of isolatable refrigerant circuits, protection of isolatable secondary coolant circuits, and required identification on a nameplate or label. Regarding condenser nameplates, these must be equipped with the manufacturer's name, model, and serial number of the equipment, year of manufacture, and design pressure. Air-cooled and evaporatively cooled condensers must also include the fan rotation direction, motor power, and electrical supply characteristics. The next section of Chapter 10 outlines proper design for air-cooled condensers, desuperheaters, and evaporative condensers. Section 10.2.1 requires that protection from exposed rotating parts be in accordance with Section 5.16.11. As shown in the picture, evaporative condensers are installed with metal grating across the fans as a protective measure. Additionally, fan speeds must not exceed the design speed limit recommended by the manufacturer. Moving on, we'll dig into the condenser installation requirements in IIAR Standard 4. Section 4.8 requires that all equipment be positioned to ensure clearance is provided for accessibility and service requirements. Furthermore, the condenser must be protected from both physical and environmental damage. When installed outdoors, equipment must be in a restricted location and have a means of preventing unauthorized access. The requirements on this page are applicable to all ammonia refrigeration equipment. However, select items do not pertain to condensers. Here is a quick rundown of the requirements. All equipment must be anchored and secured. Foundations and supports must be non-combustible and designed for the load they will carry. Equipment must be mounted to prevent excess vibration. Condensers must be passivated to prevent corrosion. Exposed rotating components must be protected. Pipe and tubing requirements for condensers include keeping the pipe and tubing free from pitting, scale, sand, and dirt. Furthermore, pipe and tubing shall be kept clean during storage, fabrication, and assembly. Now, let's turn our attention to the Inspection, Testing, and Maintenance, or ITM, requirements for condensers. These requirements are contained in Chapter 8 of IRAR Standard 6. The ITM table in Chapter 8 relates to evaporative shell and tube plate heat exchanger and air-cooled condensers. The first inspection task requires visually inspecting the water spray pattern for sufficient water distribution on an annual basis for evaporative condensers. The spray nozzles are located above the condenser coil and spray down onto the coils containing ammonia. For forced draft evaporative condensers, the mist eliminators can be removed in order to view the spray nozzles. Condenser mist eliminators must be visually inspected on an annual basis for evaporative condensers. Here are some examples of mist eliminators that are in poor condition and must be cleaned or replaced. Excessive scale buildup is visible on these mist eliminators and should be cleaned to ensure it doesn't worsen. Visually inspect the condition of the galvanized coating and scale buildup on condenser coils. These condenser coils are coated in scale, which reduces the efficiency of the unit. Next, visually inspect the exterior edges of exposed installed gaskets for degradation or indication of leaks. The edges of the gasket installed on this shell and tube condenser can be visually inspected at the heads. Next inspection items are to verify the condenser fans, shrouds, and hubs are in place and in good condition. The couplings and pulleys should also be inspected to ensure they are in good condition and proper alignment. Here we can see a properly guarded condenser with the fan shroud in place. 
On a weekly basis, listen to rotating parts for abnormal sounds and excessive vibrations. Additionally, verify guards of moving parts are in place. Each pump and sh fan shaft should be properly guarded as shown here. Visually inspect that supports are in place for each condenser. Condenser supports are often constructed of concrete or steel. Verify the water supply for the condenser is functional. This can be accomplished by observing the water level inside the condenser. Next, verify the motor mounting bolts are in place. Here, the pump motor is secured horizontally to the condenser. Ensure to inspect fan motor mounting bolts as well. Testing requirements for evaporative condensers include verifying the water treatment program is within tolerance. Lastly, testing tubes for leakage every five years or as needed is required for shell and tube condensers. Here we see an example of a condenser water treatment report from AquaTreat Solutions. Maintenance requirements of condensers include several items for the fans, like verifying fan belt tension, lubricating fan shaft bearings, and verifying the condition of the fan blade hub. Sump cleaning should be performed for evaporative condensers on an annual basis. Lastly, condenser fans and pump electric motor bearings must be lubricated. A belt tension gauge, like the one shown here, can be used to test fan drive belts. That concludes this video on condensers. I trust you found the information useful. We have more videos on our channel about ammonia refrigeration and process safety management. Feel free to check them out if you're interested.